Hi, my name is Rich Harrington and welcome to this edition of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. Today we're going to talk about making high dynamic range images. And these are essentially 32-bit images or float. And it gives you much greater flexibility when dealing with things like exposure. Now currently most camera technology tops out around 12 bits per channel. You can use a camera like this to capture a 12-bit image. Some will do 14. We're really not quite to 16-bit yet, but the world of 32-bit color space is fairly far away. So how do we do it? Well, you can create these using 3D software, but if you want to create photos, it's caused by merging multiple pictures together. So what you would do is take your camera, put it on a tripod, and shoot the same scene a couple of times. But in between each exposure, you're going to actually adjust the camera to change how much light comes in. So some you'll shoot underexposed, some you'll shoot overexposed. And by doing that, you can actually capture a wider range of information. So essentially stop down or stop up the camera to capture a little bit more. That's going to work great. Now, how do you do that in an automated sense? Some cameras will have a feature called auto bracketing. So look in your owner's manual and see if you have that. And that'll actually slide it through the exposure for you and capture multiple shots that you need to do the high dynamic range merge. Once you got a couple of pictures, you simply jump on into Photoshop and merge these together. So let's see how. So to create a HDR image, you're going to go ahead and choose File, Automate, Merge to HDR for high dynamic range. Now, this is going to bring up the Merge to HDR dialog box, and you need to specify which source files you want to use. Go ahead and click Browse, and navigate to the files. You could shift-click to select multiple files, and then click Open. Now, the box is going to be automatically checked for the option here that says, Attempt to Automatically Align Source Images. This is good because what happens is sometimes when adjusting your camera for the HDR shooting, you may slightly bump it or nudge it. This will attempt to compensate for that and go ahead and auto align the layers, much like with the panorama or as image stack. Go ahead and click OK. And Photoshop takes over in automatic mode. You'll notice over in the layers panel that you see all of the individual layers opened up. In this case, there's five exposures and an empty target layer where the HDR merge is going to go to. Once it finishes aligning the layers, it will open up a new dialog box where we can further specify options for the merge. There we go, the merge to HDR dialog box. If we want, we can go ahead and use command minus or plus on a PC control minus or plus to zoom in and out and check details. Let's set that to 100% so we get a very accurate preview. And on the left here, you see all the sources that are being used and their exposure value. So I'm going to go ahead here and use a few images. Instead of merging all five, I'm just going to take three here. And we'll use one image that's overexposed, a standard image, and one that's slightly underexposed. And those images are combined to create the new high dynamic range image. If you look at our original photo, and just a single layer here, a close look at the thumbnail will show you that it doesn't have nearly as much detail in the highlights or the shadows that are being represented here in the new image. It's going to go ahead and create a 32-bit channel file. If you want, you can go directly to a 16 or an 8-bit, but staying with 32 bits per channel is going to give you a lot more flexibility for tweaking, especially if you're using Photoshop Extended, which will then allow you to combine adjustment layers on top of the HDR image. We can go ahead and tweak the white point preview here and notice how we're adjusting. And I'm going to go ahead and actually underexpose a little bit right now to pull in this area and click OK to open up the HDR file. There you have it, a new 32-bit image. And we could drag the exposure slider here to continue to adjust the particular image. And you see that it's got a wide range of values that we can use. I'm going to go ahead and set that so the background is not overexposed, but the front here is a little dark. We can go ahead and apply an exposure adjustment layer on top of that. And I'm going to open that up a bit. 
And what I'm going to do now is take advantage of the mask attached to that adjustment layer. In this case, it's brighter on the right than I'd like it to be. So we'll select that mask, grab the gradient tool, and we'll do a gentle blend from black to white. There we go. And in this case, go like this, just a quick drag. And you see that it did the exposure adjustment. Now that went the wrong way, so I'll go ahead and uncheck the reverse button here and draw it one more time. There we go. What you see there is that it did an exposure adjustment where it essentially brightened up just the left hand edge of the image. And that's working nicely here because it's respecting the brighter doorway but still keeps this area looking pretty good. We could tweak that a little bit with the gamma slider if you want and you see that that does a nice job of sort of intensifying the darker areas there. And that's looking pretty good. We can go ahead and click back and you see that you have access to a few other controls. While working in 32 bits, you can also do hue saturation, a levels adjustment, photo filter, and the channel mixer. Let's do a levels adjustment here, and we'll open up the middle just a little bit and pull the blacks in to make it a little bit richer. That's looking pretty good. Knock the whites down just a bit with the output levels and pull that in to get some nice highlights. And that's looking pretty good. When you're all set, you can turn this into a 16-bit or 8-bit image to use elsewhere. What I recommend is that you actually save your high dynamic range image. So let's call this cockpit HDR. And we'll save that. 32-bit images are very large, so they will take a little bit of time to save. We'll then choose Window, History, and at the bottom of the History panel is the option here to create a new document from the current state. So if I click that, a new document is opened based upon the current image. We can now choose Image Mode, 16 bits per channel, and we'll go ahead and actually merge these layers down. That's going to bring up a new dialog box for a second, asking us to tweak the exposure and gamma if we'd like. And then we can click OK. And a new 16-bit image is created. Once you have that, of course, you could take advantage of any of your adjustment layers, doing things like playing with a curve if you'd like to go ahead and adjust that further. And of course, taking advantage of things like the new vibrance controls inside of CS4 to make the colors nice and rich. There we go. So great flexible workflow. We just saved that off as a 16-bit image, which would be all set to bring into a print program for printing. Currently, there is no 32-bit printing, but many printers do support 16-bit output. The advantage of making that 32-bit file is that you've got greater latitude over controlling which parts of the highlights and the shadows are seen within your shot. And in the case of this particular photo, we were able to shoot in a very dark environment and still capture a very broad range of exposure. Now, creating those 32-bit images may seem a little strange to you, but it's definitely worth doing. It gives you great flexibility when you're working with the images, as well as all sorts of things you can do. Besides having greater exposure control, this is really common with things like landscape photography or architecture, because it really shows a much wider range and creates a very impressive image. Plus, a whole new movement has been developing where people are shooting very artistic photos this way that look like they combine photography with sketch to an almost surreal quality. There's a great book in the works from Ben Wilmore that actually explores 32-bit imaging with the high dynamic range techniques, and you should really check that out. My name is Rich Harrington. Thanks for joining us for this week's episode of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. Be sure to tune in next week where we've got lots of cool things that will help speed you up. Thanks again.